Ahoy mates! Welcome on board Royal Caribbean's Radiance of the Seas. We are here for a six night sailing, so if you'd like to check out our daily videos and our room tour, be sure to check out our full Radiance of the Seas playlist. For today's video, I want to take you around, give you a full and complete tour of this ship. We're going to see all of the public venues on board. We'll start deck by deck, so let's go ahead and go down to deck number two. We'll start there and work our way up to the top. So let's go ahead and begin our tour of Radiance of the Seas, which starts right now. All right, so we begin on deck two, no public deck one on this vessel, and here is our map. So we can see we have two sets of elevators on this ship, the forward elevators and then what they call the centrum elevators, which we'll go over in just a little bit. So the only thing off the centrum elevators are, is a tender station, which is also available off the forward elevators here, and then it's just staterooms in between. So the only thing to see here, again, off the forward elevators is the entrance to the medical facility. So you come over to port side, follow the signs, and you'll head right in there. And before we move on, I do want to point out that the signs here are very helpful because it tells you which elevator lobby you need to use to access these different points of interest on each deck. And you'll find these at each of the elevator bays. So with that said, we are done with deck number two. Let's go to number three. Deck number three now, and this is interesting. I don't usually have this this early in a tour, but if we come down on the directory, deck number three is just staterooms. Nothing public to see here. So we're going up to deck four. Deck number four now, and if we look at our map, we see there is nothing forward here of interest. Everything's staterooms in the middle. So we're actually gonna head back to the Centrum Elevator Bay and show those public areas. All right, so we are now at the Centrum Elevator Bay here. And what's unique about this one is that it's the larger of the two elevator bays. So there are five elevator stations instead of three at the forward ones. Actually, excuse me, it's six, six elevators. But what's really cool is they are glass elevators. So not only do you get to look inside to the ship when you're going up, but you also can look outside because you have these huge panes of glass going all along the side, the porthole windows down here at the bottom. So you see there goes an elevator right there, it's glass, so you get to look outside while you're ascending the decks or descending the decks, which is a pretty cool feature. Now across from the elevators, we will find the namesake for them, which is the actual Centrum area. Now this is an older class of ship. This is a Radiance class ship. And these do not have promenades or esplanades like we've seen on other classes of ship. So instead there's this Centrum area, which does ascend all the way up the ship. You can see it going all the way to the top there and coming back down here at the bottom with the elevator bays. They do have a small stage area here where they'll do live music in the evening and things like that. Places to hang out they do have a bar here in the middle so this is kind of the main hub the main lobby area of this ship now across from the centrum on the starboard side there is an ATM and then you'll also find the desk for guest relations or guest services and explorations which is shore excursions so if you need help with any of those items you can stop here and they can assist you now just past the centrum and the centrum elevators heading aft here on the port side we will find the entrance to the main dining room so they will post the menu there every night they also have it there in the paper style. So this is the Cascades dining room. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, and they'll have the hours for each uh, meal service posted there as well. Let's head inside and have a quick look around. So as you would expect, it's pretty common dining room setup. Lots of tables, obviously. And then you're going to have the windows over on the side. So down here on this deck, you're going to have porthole windows. On the higher decks, you'll actually have kind of more like a floor-to-ceiling window design. And they do have a nice staircase here in the middle with a great waterfall feature there in the back. And you are open up to the next deck here. So deck three where we're on, uh, or excuse me, deck four where we're on, open up to deck five up above. Got the nice mural there in the back. So again, pretty standard dining room setup, but uh, nice with the windows and the waterfall features and the art. All right, since we covered the Centrum area there, guest relations and explorations in the Cascades dining room, we're now done with deck four and we can go to five. All right, deck five, quite a few things to see here. We're gonna be stretching the whole span of the deck. We're at the Centrum elevators once again, and again, we can see out there through the windows. We're gonna turn and head aft here. Again, on the port side, we'll find the upper entrance to Cascade. So we just saw it, nothing really new to see there, but this is where you would enter for that. And over here on the starboard side, you will find another entrance into Cascade's dining room. So either way, you can enter starboard or port. Now I want to point out, you can also go outside on the deck here on this deck, on deck number five. You can go out here in your open air 
And this is actually where the smoking area, one of the smoking areas is located as well, is out here on this deck right to my right. So here on the starboard side. But you can actually walk along the whole deck area, go forward here, access the helipad, all that stuff. I'll show you that in just a little bit, but for now let's head back inside. So now proceeding forward on the starboard side, we're back in the Centrum area and the first thing we'll find is the next cruise desk. This is where you can come to book your next cruise. They have flyers here with all the different sailings available and a little uh, explanation here of how it works. You can get up to $600 as a discount or onboard credit depending on the category you book and uh, how long the sailing is. They have their hours of operation posted here and you can also do this. This is the book now choose later form. So you fill this out. They take a, a deposit, usually $100 per person. It's usually $200 deposit, non-refundable. Drop that in the box there. They'll take that deposit, and then you have up to two months to choose your next sailing to receive these benefits. Now, if you go past the two months, you'll lose the benefits, but you still have the reduced deposit for up to a year. If you haven't made it a decision by a year, then the deposit is forfeit. And people always ask us, because we're travel agents, are is the next cruise desk really a good deal and the answer is yes because it's the same exact offer that you would get back on land at that point in time but you're going to get the discount you're going to get the onboard credit plus the reduced deposit so you really can't go wrong with it and they can send it right to us as your travel agent and have it all set up right there at the next cruise desk so it's a really handy feature we do recommend taking advantage of it while you're on board. Now just past the next cruise desk we will find Cafe Latte Tudes serving up specialty coffees there and they do have a nice little seating area uh, adjacent to that. They do have some pastries here that you can grab as well and these are included with your cruise fare. And then they have the specialty coffee menu here and the additional prices for that. As we turn back and look at the actual Centrum area, I wanted to point out, you'll see all these little comfortable chairs, couches, tables, things like that. And we are going to see those throughout on every deck. These little alcoves will have seating so that you can enjoy the ambiance, you can enjoy the live entertainment in the evening. So I'm not going to keep pointing that out, just know that it is spread throughout the entire Centrum area. Now if you try to proceed forward here on the starboard side past ca Cafe Latitudes, you will run into this area, the shops of the Centrum. And if the shops aren't open, then the doors are closed, as you can see, because you can't get in if the shops are closed while you're in port. So you actually need to go around to the port side to be able to proceed forward. So over here on the port side, we will find Royal Caribbean online. So you'll see they have the different computer areas set up here. So uh, if you wanna use a computer, you don't wanna just use your mobile device, along with your internet package that you've purchased, you can come here and use a computer to do that. And then they also have a printer should you need to print something. And now we'll proceed forward on uh, the port side again through the shops of the Centrum, but this area is open because it's not into an actual shop like the starboard side is. Now they will have different merchandise items on display here, but you're not actually in a shop. So this is where we will begin the shopping area. Again, we're in port right now, so the shops are currently closed, but you'll get an idea. It's the same typical stuff you always see, like that was a perfume and fragrance shop. Here's the logo souvenir shop, which is gonna sell Royal Caribbean items with the crown and anchor logo on it, or things specific to the cruise ship itself. Over on this side, you'll have resort wear and gifts. You're gonna have different kinds of bags, clothes, jewelry, sunglasses, things like that. There is an actual jewelry section here as well. And we can actually kind of see into this one. It's pretty self-explanatory what they've got going on in there. And then over on this side, we'll see the part that says general store. So this is going to be the area that sells alcohol, snacks, medicine, and even little souvenirs and things like that. And the merch on display just continues throughout the entire area here, this little hallway, until it dumps you out into this spot. And at this point, you have some options. You can go outside on that outer deck that we talked about earlier. You can go forward to enter the art and photo gallery, or you can also find the entrance to the conference center, but it is typically a crew entrance here. I will show you the actual entrance in just a minute. Now, as we head forward, we do enter the art and photo gallery. Now there's actually art on display all throughout the ship that you can bid on and purchase, but this is the main area for that, as well as where you would come to look in at and purchase your photos. Now they have gone mostly through the app now. They don't really put out the photos anymore. They want you to look at those through the app and then you can purchase them here. But they also have different, uh, you know, commemorative items, souvenir items, picture frames, things like that. They have camera equipment. You see they have a GoPro stand over here with GoPros and equipment, SD cards, charge ports, waterproof cases for your phone, things like that, little towel animal souvenirs 
all throughout the area that you can purchase. And in case you forgot your camera, you can also purchase some here, as well as binoculars, which is handy because this ship does frequent Alaska, so that would be very nice to have up there. Now back here in the back, past the little towel animal display, we'll find the actual entrance to the conference center, and it's just a conference center area. They have those different rooms. So if you were having a group on board, if you need some space to kind of have a breakout session or meeting or whatever, you can arrange that and they will get you set up inside the conference center. Now we proceed forward. Again, we're on the starboard side of the ship and we'll start to see a lot more of the art on display here. And here is actual Park West desk. So if you're interested in purchasing the art, this is where you would come to speak to someone about that. And now here at the very forward part, we're at the forward elevators, we arrive to the entrance of the Aurora Theater, which is currently closed, but I went inside the other day and got some shots there. So it is a two level theater. You do have some balcony seating up top and it's pretty nice and spacious. This is where they'll have their original production, headliner shows. They'll also show some movies in here as well. And I wanted to point out that you can access the theater from either the starboard or the port side. Here on the port side, there's also another entrance area to the conference center. For our last feature here on deck number five, we're actually gonna go back outside to this open deck, and then we're gonna turn and walk all the way forward as this will take us to the helipad, which is a favorite on ships that you're actually able to access that. So let's head up there. And I should point out as we make our way up there, first of all, they will close this gate if you cannot access the helipad or the helideck as they call it. Uh, so if it's open, you're good to go. But here on the starboard side, there is also a pet relief box if you need that for your service this animal. Now we're going to just proceed down this hallway here. We'll find some stairs at the end. We head up those to get to the helipad. So here is that stairwell. And once we get to the top of the stairs here, we are open air. You can get some great views here. And then you can actually come around to the actual elevated helipad area, which they have closed because they've got some wet varnish, but uh, you can see it here. There's not really much else to see. Great spot for a sailway, great spot for a scenic area. If you're in Alaska, I can't imagine the views from here. Now I want to point out, people always ask what this little walled off area is. It's actually just a crew area, so nothing you need to be concerned with. Up above though, you can see the portholes for the ocean view windows that are along the front. So those are actual staterooms that you could stay in and have that view from the front out your porthole window which we did in Alaska, granted on a quantum class ship, but it was actually a really nice option, so something you might want to consider as well. Okay, now that we've covered the helipad, we have finally covered the whole span of deck five. I did want to point out, you won't actually see the helipad on the map, and technically it is up on six, but I just showed you how you get to it, so just keep that in mind. And with that said, we are ready to go to deck number six. All right, we're staying busy here with deck number six. A ton of things to see, again, spanning the entire deck area. So we're at the forward elevators here and I wanted to point out that you can also access the Aurora Theater up here on deck six in addition to deck five. So either here on the starboard side or over on the port side, either way will work. Now I'm on the starboard side. I'm going to turn and head aft here and we'll find the entrance to the Quill and Compass, which is the pub area on board Radiance of the Seas. They do have some seating here outside away from all the action, but then you can get into the actual pub area itself and typical features of a pub. Dark woods, got the bar there in the middle, what else? Plenty of tables and chairs to have a conversation, high booths, they have a small stage here for live entertainment in the evening, and they do have televisions, typically playing live sports if they're available, or playing random Royal Caribbean TV if they're not. Uh, and it does continue over here, we do have a nice dartboard area, so you can get your darts on there, and then a little nook over there you can sit in by the entrance of the casino, and the booths continue over here by the entrance to the cinema. So let's talk about that cinema. I mentioned that they will sometimes show movies in the Aurora Theater, but they also have a dedicated cinema movie theater area here on board Radiance of the Season. They have this nice little sign right there letting you know that this is the area for that. So if you wanna access the cinema, you find this with the twinkly lights up above and the cool film reel tile work down below and head through the curtain right in for showtime. And here's a look inside the cinema. It's not huge, but big enough for sure. Now as we exit the Quill and Compass area, we will turn and head aft 
and we'll find the entrance to Casino Royale. So it's a pretty standard casino setup. They're gonna have all their slot machines and things like that, table games, crafts, roulette, blackjack, all the standard features. I will point out that this is a smoking casino and the smoke is very strong in here. And because of the open air design of the ship, it does travel throughout the rest of the ship. So if you're sensitive to smoke, be aware of that. They do have a bar here in the middle and then it just continues on both sides. You can access any part of the casino, spans the entire width of the deck. And as we exit Casino Royale, we find ourselves back in the Centrum area. Now over on the port side, we'll of course have our Centrum elevators again with all the glass. Here on the starboard side, we'll find a giant champagne bottle designating that this is the champagne bar. So we have the bar itself there in the middle, seating all around, and then we have floor to ceiling windows as well, giving us that beautiful view. Checking in here on our map, on our deck plan, just to get reoriented, we saw the entrance to the theater, saw the entrance to the cinema, saw the pub, Casino Royale you can access from either side, then we have the Centrum Elevators and we saw the Champagne Bar. So now we have to kick over to the starboard side, you can't continue back on the port side, so we have to go to the starboard side to continue aft, and that's what we're going to do now. So here on the starboard side, just past the Champagne Bar, we'll find the entrance to the Schooner Bar tried and true Royal Caribbean favorite. You'll find this on every Royal Caribbean ship and you'll see the signage here also lets us know what other items are in this area and this one is like decked out. Look at the gunpowder, the cannons, the cannonballs, the paintings. Of course the schooner bar is always themed nautically so you're going to get those dark woods, the ropes, the ship's wheels, things like that. So it's just kind of open and flows through here. They're doing some trivia right now. That'll be a common feature of this area. So the schooner bar all the way through. You have the bar there on the right and then the four to ceiling windows on the left. So here we'll also find the entrance to Chop's Grill and this of course is the steakhouse on board. So we'll have our menu posted here. Now this is a specialty dining venue and what that means is that it comes at an additional cost. So you do have to pay extra for this. You can get different dining packages like the unlimited or the three night dining. They do offer those you can purchase in advance of your cruise and they also do a sprinkle time cupcake decorating class here inside Chop's Grill as well. So right here off the schooner bar that's the entrance to the restaurant and here's a look inside chop screw very nice very fancy got the chandelier up there and the floor to ceiling windows on the side now the next thing we'll find here is the entrance to Giovanni's table which is another specialty dining venue this is the Italian restaurant on board and there's the menu posted there and you can also sign up for the different packages and stuff here as well. So again, specialty dining, so it is coming at additional cost, but delicious Italian food. And here's a look inside Giovanni's. Again, floor to ceiling windows, just like we saw inside of Chops. And here in the middle of the schooner bar, we will find the piano because it is typically a piano bar. So in the evening, you'll have live piano entertainment. And here at the end of the schooner bar, we will find the entrance to the Colony Club. Now this is going to be a multi-use space. They'll use this for bingo, they'll use this for live music in the evening, dance parties, different things like that. Now before we actually get into that spot, you'll see kind of this little foyer area with some nice seating. And then you'll also find some pool tables over here. And the cool thing with these pool tables is they are self-leveling. They're kind of like gyroscopic. So as the ship moves, the pool table levels out so the balls aren't rolling all over the place. So it's a really nice feature to have there. And they actually have a little placard here explaining how all of that works. It's a really smart feature. And now we enter the main colony club area. We see our bar right as we come in. We're gonna have some high tops and bar rail seating over here, as well as some standard tables and chairs. And some of the tables along the back actually have checkers and chess boards on them with the pieces stored there as well. Floor to ceiling windows throughout the space here on the sides. And then you see all the seating all around the area, even some booth seating available here. Dance floor right in the middle, stage there in the back for the performers and it just continues on around. There's even an additional bar space over here on the side. So this is a huge venue and it does still get packed. Everyone usually comes in here when there's an event going on because it's usually the event of the evening happening in here. But hey, when you're docked in port, especially here at Perfect Day at Coco Cay, you can get some fantastic views from this spot. And if you wanna talk about hidden features, I got something for you here. I'm used to doing these tours all the time and I almost completely miss this. Chef's table. Here right off the Colony Club, you see the glass doors. Now this is a specialty dining experience and it's a very intimate experience. There's the table. I mean, that's it. <laughs> it is not a very big spot. So of course this does come at an additional cost, but this is probably the most elevated dining experience that you can have on board. All right, so we went through the whole deck here, even found that chef's table tucked away in the back there. So we're finished with six 
Seven's up, and I really like deck number seven because it is just state rooms. Nothing to see here, we're going to eight. Now deck number eight is mostly state rooms. There's just one little thing to see, Explorer's Court, which is right here off the Centrum Elevators. Let's take a look. And I'm not really sure what the intended use of this space is, but it looks like just basically a nice little sitting area. There's a desk here. So I don't know if sometimes they'll staff someone here to answer questions or whatever. There's no signage to indicate hours of operation. This might have been an old feature that they've discontinued, but it is located on or labeled on the map as Explorer's Court. says it over there on the sign. But hey, a nice spot to sit and enjoy the uh, music and ambiance of the Centrum. Deck 8 complete, going to 9. Similar to deck number 8, deck number 9 is mostly staterooms. Just one little thing to see here off the Centrum Elevators is the library. Let's head forward and just above the Explorer's Court area we saw down below, we find the entrance to the library. So they have books stocked here that you can borrow and read. You even have a book drop there. Also some coloring, daily trivia, stoku, things like that. And the books do continue on around here and it's a nice quiet little nook space. Relax and read. Deck 9 is Fin, so we go to 10. And Deck 10 is going to continue our trend of being just staterooms, except for the one thing off the Centrum elevators. On this deck, it is Seven Hearts. And here is Seven Hearts, which is just kind of like a little card playing area, a little hangout area. Tables and chairs there, here in the middle, and a cool little ship model as well. That's pretty much it. Again, a nice spot to overlook the Centrum, watch the elevators, listen to the music. That's Seven Hearts. Just like that, deck number 10 is done, and we are also done with our quick little mostly stateroom decks. From this point on, we're actually going to be getting into quite a bit of stuff here as we finish with our final three decks. So let's go ahead and get it started. Let's go to 11. All right, deck 11 now, aka the main pool deck, but we're going to have stuff on either side of that. So I'm going to start here. We're at the Centrum Elevators. We're actually going to turn and head towards the back. Actually, I'm going to kind of go outside and do this so I can show you this area first. Then we'll go into the back. And actually, this map helps explain perfectly perfectly what I'm going to do. So we're going to see Boardwalk Doghouse, come back inside, go into the Windjammer, which is like a big circle, and then we'll see those two venues as well. So outside here we will find a couple of ping pong tables, as well as some tables and chairs to dine at, because the Boardwalk Doghouse is here. Now this is included with your cruise fare, and they do have like standard hot dogs, but they'll usually have sausage dogs, other things like that, sauerkraut, onions to top it off with, coleslaw and potato salad as some side options as well. So as we enter the Windjammer, they will have a sign telling what the night's menu is, as well as what the burger of the day is for each day. Sanitize your hands here, and then you enter into the main buffet space. And they'll also have the hours posted for each dining service here as you enter as well. So that is interesting. They don't have sinks here. So this one you just sanitize before you go in. But beyond that, it's kind of the same standard buffet setup you would expect for the most part. Floor to ceiling windows on the outside, tables and chairs along the perimeter, and then the food service stations in the uh, center area there. This is not a very big venue, but uh, it is nice. I like the kind of hardwoods, the uh, dark woods, and the nautical theming throughout. And again, beverage stations here, food stations in the center, and the seating on around. So now we want to come over here on the starboard side because there's something very cool about Radiance Class Ship's Windjammer, which is that they offer an outdoor seating section. So if we just head right through here, we will find the beginning of the outdoor area. This is still covered. All of it's really going to be covered, but this is still kind of with the windows that they can't open up, but it's a little bit more closed in. They do have the bar here. I believe this is Rita's Cantina Bar. And then we continue on throughout, and now we're actually open air here on the back side, and you're gonna have this large dining area as part of the wind jammer. You can bring your food and drinks out here, dine outside, open air. Again, it is covered, so you don't have to worry about rain or the sun beating down on you. You can take in some great weight views or the views of the port while you eat. Now over here on the port side of Windjammer, towards the back, past this last food service station, we will find the entrance to Izumi Asian Cuisine. So this is pretty much just Izumi Sushi. They do not have hibachi on this ship. But this is another specialty dining venue, so it does come at an additional cost. And depending on whether you do a la carte or do a prefix menu, your pricing will vary there. But here's a look at the menu and what they offer here at Izumi Sushi. Again, no hibachi here on this one. And here is a look inside at the dining space, which is nice because you can see the outdoor section, the wind jammer that we just saw a minute ago, and you do have the floor to ceiling windows looking out here as well. 
Now over here on the starboard side as we're heading towards the exit of the Windjammer, I wanted to point out this little sign says Windjammer Cafe Veranda and you see they have a sign there that says private function. So this is another little additional seating space that can be used for private functions or just expanded seating. Now as we've exited the Windjammer, we have our Centrum elevators over there, stairs right here. I did want to point out that there is actually labeled another art gallery section here over on the starboard side and you can see all the art that they have here outside of the restrooms. Back at our map to get reoriented, so we have now covered this entire section that was Windjammer, Rita's Cantina Bar, the Izumi, all of that was uh, there together with the Boardwalk Doghouse right outside. So now we're gonna head outside to the main pool area. So you'll have all the standard features of a main pool deck like sun loungers all throughout. This is actually a really small space. They do have a stage here for live entertainment in the afternoons typically, and then our pool and hot tubs and things in the middle. Let's head upstairs to get a bird's eye view. So here's the overview of our pool deck area. You'll see we have the pool bar down there in the center, then our main pool area which has the shallow shelf, and then the actual deeper swimming area, plus these two elevated hot tubs right off the side. And we also have the big video board there above the stage area. And the lounge chairs are just throughout, so it's a pretty standard pool deck area, not too many bells and whistles to it. As we continue forward here on the port side, I want to point out we do have a lifeguard station here, should you need to speak to someone. And then beyond this point, we're actually entering into the solarium through these glass doors, which is an adult air only area. Now interesting, on most ships it says guests 16 and up for the solarium, this one says 18 and up. So, a little bit of difference there. Right as we come in, we will find the solarium bar, so you can get all your drinks there. And you're going to find tables and chairs throughout the area, as well as the floor to ceiling windows letting in the natural light. And then in the middle we will find our main solarium pool. So it's kind of got just an easy entry there, and then you're going through the stairs into the deeper area. And this tends to stay not very crowded, so it's a nice spot to come have a swim. I love the elephant artwork up here. They have the different animal statues throughout the area as well. And then you have the glass ceiling, and I do believe that this can open up as well to let in some open air uh, come through, which this could also be a nice feature when you're sailing in Alaska. They do have the freshwater showers here, a hot tub centrally located, and then across from the solarium bar, past the beautiful 3D artwork, you will find what they're actually calling Park Cafe, which is funny because Park Cafe is usually on ships that have a central park, but they're calling this Park Cafe too, so why not? There is a uh, self-service complimentary beverage station here, and then around the corner, you'll find the actual food service area. So this is going to serve snacks throughout the days, little pastries, things like that. So since we don't have a promenade, this is going to effectively be our cafe promenade, our park cafe, our cafe 270, all rolled into one. And they will have the hours posted here as well for each meal time. And there's an additional uh, food service area here as well. Now, I, when I came through the other day, they had things like cookies here that they were serving up as well as like a salad bar area where you could tell them which, you know, toppings and things you wanted and they would make that salad for you. And then your seating just continues on throughout the solarium area. And over here on the starboard side entrance to the solarium, there's a towel station. So we saw the lifeguard desk over on the port side, towel station here on the starboard side. And whenever I'm speaking to clients on the phone and I say starboard or port, they're like, I can never remember that. Well, just tell me right or left. Well, first you'll want to remember it because that's how it's going to be referred to when you're on the ship. But the easy way to remember it is port has four letters, left has four letters letters. So port is left, starboard is right. All right, so now we have transversed the main pool area through the solarium, and now here at the forward section, the forward elevators, we have a couple of different things to see. So if we come over to the starboard side, you'll see it says hair salon. So you'll have these neat little seating areas. You can go back into the solarium. They have the cool lights up above. On this side, you can actually go into the hair salon, though it does say to please use the main Radiance Day Spa entrance, but there is a look inside the hair salon with the nice windows to look out. Now, if we come over to the port side, you'll see again, you can enter back into the solarium, or you can go to the Ship Shape Fitness Center, as well as the main entrance for the Vitality Day Spa. So that's going to be right through here. And as you proceed back, you can go through to the different treatment areas, or you can actually take the stairs up here to the Ship Shape Fitness Center. And now that we've seen the entrance to that and the spa, we have completed deck number 11. We're going to 12. So lots of things to get into here on deck 12. And again, we're now at the forward elevators. And either way, starboard or port, we're going to head 
into the entrance to the ship shape fitness center so we saw the stairwell down below that went into it but you can actually access it here as well and it's going to be your pretty standard fitness center got the towels there resistance machines they're going to have treadmills all that good stuff for you to use and you're going to have the floor to ceiling windows throughout the area overlooking the front of the ship side of the ship they have cycles they have medicine balls, kettlebells, yoga mats, rollers, and a big open floor area to do those different activities. So here is the stairwell that we saw uh, to access this area from the spa. And now past that, we're over here on the port side now. We find these little consultation, de consultation desk as well as the uh, dumbbells and additional machinery here. Now I did want to point out there's actually a door to head outside here get out on the jogging track and it's also a great spot to have a look out the front of the ship so we can see our painted jogging track that's going to go throughout the deck area they'll also have some water fountains out here and some sun loungers and again we're at the very forward part of the ship so you can actually look out wherever the ship is heading out to sea or maybe a port if you're docked at that point in time now you'll see the actual stairwells over here on either side port and here on starboard this just goes down to an additional viewing area let's check it out so we see here arrive down at this lower deck they do use this area for some additional storage of the sun loungers but it just kind of walks around here and just kind of an open deck area and again you can look out to the very front of the ship as i head back inside here i wanted to point out 6.3 laps 16 10 meters What's funny is I've come back inside just so I can turn around and go right back outside, but I wanted to use the map to kind of show. We saw the fitness center, we came around the little uh, stairwells down to that little viewing deck area, and now we have to actually go back outside to the jogging track. That's the only way to proceed down deck 12 is outside. If we turn around here on the interior, we'll find the stairwell and the restroom. So back outside we go. So outside here on deck 12 is pretty much just going to be the sun deck in addition to the jogging track. Again, you can see painted throughout and they're just going to have these sun loungers throughout this area. There's really not too much going on out here and you're just going to kind of have the upper deck of the pool deck area so you can look down below if they're doing like belly flop contest or some kind of party or event. It's a good spot to kind of come and take that in. One thing I will point out in addition to the cool radiance of the sea sign and the cool totem pole which is very appropriate for Alaska is that you do have the sky bar here in the center so this is right above the pool bar you can come up on this deck and go to the sky bar now either way starboard port it's just again sun loungers continue throughout until we get to the back section so let's head that way right now all right I'm now at the centrum elevators here and I'm back at the map because this next part can get a little confusing it's a little labyrinthian so here are the centrum elevators I'm going to take you to this center part here and then we're going to kind of cut through into this area which is going to be the entrance to optics royal babies and tots and adventure ocean are all going to enter right here from the inside then we're going to go outside and see the back part of this stuff so let's start right here in the middle where it says crown and anchor and it says that because right off the stairwell here we'll find the loyalty desk if you need to speak to someone about your crown and anchor benefits you can do that and it's also just a nice little lounge area which is actually open air down below to the centrum so all the way down there you'll be able to hear the music if anything's going on and then this is really cool this glass portion that looks all the way down to the bottom floor of the centrum now we sailed on jewel the seas you could actually walk over this they have since put signs up to not sit or step on the glass so we will adhere to those rules but it is a really cool view up here and then you're kind of just open air with a little walk across bridges to get back over to the sides to get outside to the pool deck now back over here on the port side by the centrum elevators is just a door to go outside so we'll go past the stairs again past the loyalty area where we just were over here to the starboard side we can see the signage pointing us in the direction of different things the first area we're going to find though is basically the kids area so we're going to have adventure ocean which is the kids club royal babies and tots which is like the nursery area and then optics which is the teen disco so let's check out these different spots and here's a look inside optics the teen disco got a foosball table there comfortable seating all around a little dance stage here with the lighting a booth tucked up here in the back with a tv to watch got the notes up there another tv even got like a little juice bar section right here looks like some video games got Xbox set up here in the back a couple of different monitors there and even a dartboard hung up there although it's pretty hot I don't see any darts so maybe just for decor and 
here's a look inside the check-in desk area and the little play area there. Got the TV over on the side. So there's back through to the nursery. And then we have the check-in desk area here for the actual Adventure Ocean area. And they have it split up with these little doors for the different age groups. So three to five, the Aquanauts has their activity area there. Then we have a main area here. It looks like a hand-washing station. That's a lot of activity areas here, even maybe some video games and right out to the basketball court out there. And this map kind of gives us a helpful idea of how to get to all this stuff. So you are here, so you go into the Royal Babies and Tots, right here where the sign is, right where the door is. To get to the Adventure Ocean area, you go down this hallway we went through, and that takes you into the main area. So now we've covered all that, we're gonna head outside here and see this stuff in the back. So the first thing we're gonna come across is the kids' splash play area, which they currently have netted off, and the water slide, which is just a pretty standard water slide. It's open air, little tube, it just gently winds around. Not too many frills or thrills there, but you do have the splash area down below here. It is at least an option. And then right next to that, we're gonna have the basketball, soccer, Soccer, pickleball court. So the sports court area, it just has the one basketball hoop and they will put up the different nets for pickleball or soccer or whatever. Whatever activities they have going on, dodgeball, will all take place right here. Now just past our water slide and splash play area on the starboard side of the ship, we will turn aft and find the entrance to Samba Grill Brazilian Steakhouse. Now this is an additional cost because this is a specialty dining venue, but it's going to be a ton of meats here. Here's a look at the menu. You got all kinds of stuff going on inside the Samba Grill there, which is currently closed. The doors are not opening, but you can see inside here because we do have the, the glass panels. So we can see there floor to ceiling windows around, looking out here on the outside while you enjoy your different cuts of meat. And here's a view from another angle. Now we're continuing along the aft here. I want to point out you'll find the stairwells here. That actually takes you, that's the outdoor seating section for the Windjammer that we saw earlier. Now you can continue on around here to the port side. There will be another stairwell over here. And then we will also find a shuffleboard court painted right there on the deck. And they have the different sticks and the pucks stored over there. And then we also see the sign here for Challenger's Video Arcade. And we enter the arcade through the doorway there on the outside. We can see it's not the biggest arcade. It's pretty small, but they do have some fun offerings. And they do have a prize hub, so you can earn virtual tickets to redeem four prizes. It will track either through your C-Pass card or through an arcade card should you purchase one of those. Now, something we always like to point out here is, of course, these do cost additional to play. If you purchase arcade credits through My Royal Cruise on Royal Caribbean's website before your cruise, you will get a 20% discount. So if you know someone's going to be playing in the arcade, recommend taking advantage of that. So with that, we've pretty much completed Deck 12. Now, here's the interesting thing. Deck 13 is our last deck, so no superstitions here. Uh, but it's mostly access from outside stairwells. Like, we see this one here, and it says up to Fairways of Radiance. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and head up here, and we'll begin Deck 13. So as we land up the stairs here, we will find the entrance to the aforementioned Fairways of Radiance, which is the mini golf here on board Radiance of the Seas. And it is included with your cruise fare. Grab your putters, grab your balls right there, and then you just begin here with hole number one. I think it's cool. The signs kind of give you an outlay of how you know each hole is laid out, and it just continues on around there, around the bend, and then ends over here on this side. And now we can walk across this bridge area here between the basketball court and the water slide. Now you can also access this area from some stairs that are outside over here or over here but it's just nice to walk across the bridge. And of course we find our rock climbing wall. Now this is also included with your cruise fare. So you just sign up, get uh, hooked up in all your equipment right there over there at the desk. And then you can begin your rock climb, ring the bell when you get to the top. They also usually have some cornhole or bags set up out here as well. In addition to the different sun loungers. Now we're gonna see the access areas to these uh, different parts from the inside. But I wanna point out, this is the outdoor section of the kind of concierge club, the suite lounge you have there. They are working on it right now, doing some painting and stuff. 
so we won't bother them too much but just know that that's out there and then over on this side if they have the doors open we'll see these glass doors which will open into a main area that we're going to see which they actually do have them currently oh it did open but it is stanchioned off it can go inside this area which we'll see in just a minute okay a little bit out of order here <laughs> I had to come back inside to show you the rest of the stuff on deck 13 and i figure while we're here why not just again go over the map of deck 12 so we covered all of these different areas went outside and saw this and now we're up to the final deck deck 13. and deck 13 as i mentioned is our final deck and there is no deck 13 forward area like nothing that's actually listed as a public space uh, so everything here is in the back and we saw the fairways of radiance went across the bridge to the rock climbing wall and now we have these three areas here in the middle that we access from the inside from the centrum elevators and there will actually be on the decks below a specific button you will hit for this high of a deck so just know that now the first thing we're going to find right off the elevators is the entrance to the crown lounge so this is for members of the crown and anchor society who have reached diamond diamond plus or pinnacle they could come in here and lounge i am diamond plus so we can go in and not a huge space but they do have a desk here that can kind of assist you with setting different things up and then we're going to have like a little snack bar uh, coffee machine area over here. So we've got some fruit and pastries out right now, especially coffee machine. And then they have the tables and chairs for you just to come in and lounge around. Big windows overlooking the outside of the ship and uh, over the pool deck as well in here. And now off the other side of the elevators, we see this sign says Star Quest. And we come in here. Now the first thing we'll find, unfortunately I will not be able to show you, which is the entrance to the concierge club. So if you're staying in a suite, you would have access to this. It's basically the suite lounge. I am not staying in a suite, thus I cannot show you. But we can kind of peek through the gap here maybe <laughs> to kind of get an idea. <laughs> it's hard. Yay! <laughs> a little lounge area inside there for for sweet guests and we continue past that we will find our stairwell and this cool little glass spirally piece and that takes us on into the entrance of star quest in the evening this will be star quest disco for ages 18 years and older after 10 p.m but they have the main bar area here in the middle and then this is just a huge lounge space throughout the day tables chairs high tops everything they even have a piano in here for live entertainment and you're going to have the floor to ceiling windows all throughout the space looking out over the side looking back out over the pool deck because the diamond lounge is right over there so that we saw a minute ago and then they're going to have this big dance uh, floor spot here in the middle again for the disco area in the evening and it even continues on around to this side big booth seating and then that goes outside where we tried i uh, showed you through the doors earlier back out to the outer deck next to this really cool mural now as i mentioned a minute ago there is nothing showing as a public area for deck 13 forward there's nothing listed on the map or the directory however i happen to know that there is an elevated area that you can access here from deck 12 via these stairs so let's go check that out and we will finish our tour so right outside the fitness center just off the jogging track we will find this stairwell and it takes us up to this area which has fake grass and i guess that's why it's not on the directory or the map because it's really not anything it's just an additional lounge space with some fake grass but you can look out over the side of the ship you can look out a forward part of the ship and it just kind of wraps around just like this they even have water fountains up here too so yeah here you go <laughs> fake grass and sun lounger area overlook the forward part of the ship or if you're on the port side or the starboard side the sides of the ship it just wraps around here and there's really nothing more to it than that so here's our stairwell on the other side and that's going to do it for deck 13. well there you have it friends that is our tour of royal caribbean's radiance of the seas again check out the full radiance of the seas playlist if you want to see daily videos and our room tour as well and if you're interested in booking your own royal caribbean cruise we are travel agents we work mostly with royal caribbean and our services are always completely free to you you'll never pay a single cent more to book with us than you would direct on your own so please feel free to reach out via that travel agent information you can find it in the description of this video if you've recently booked your royal caribbean cruise within the past 30 days and you're not paid in full you can transfer your booking to our agency that's also free of charge and then we'll be able to assist you the rest of the way so either way we hope we'll hear from you soon once again thanks for joining us for today's video but we're signing off we'll see you next time happy travels